Robots are taking over people. I keep talking about this, and I firmly believe it's happening in the next 20 years or so. And now Google has bought one of the military's biggest suppliers of robots. That's right, they've bought Boston Dynamics. These guys make robots for them and all kind of mechanized machines for war. And we've got some video. This first one is of Wildcat. <laughs> It doesn't look that scary, but the buzzing, I guess, could be annoying, right? I think it looks scary. That looks that yeah. looks scary. Well, All right. Yeah, it's actually being chased by bees. <laughs> the bees. That's the scary. It's powered by bees, I think. Uh, this next one. This is Pet Man. <laughs> All right, so these are, we're laughing about it, but these are robots that we are going to send to war one day. We talk about robots on this show all the time. How long until the robots take over and Skynet and we have to destroy them and we have to bring John Connor to save us First all? First of all, it's be Boston Dynamics, so they'll be going to war. Wah. Wah. Got it, yes. They're being used the, by the yes. army yes. to go to war. Uh, really, though, I, I'm, a, I'm just a firm believer that these robots are going to turn against us. You know, we've talked about the singularity on this show and that just all this technology, we're going to build things that are going to be more powerful than we are and they're going to be able to learn without us and then they won't need us anymore. Am I a complete paranoid loon? We're already seeing that happen with some jobs. I mean, you, we're seeing the d development of uh, driverless cars, yep. for instance. Um, and even if you go to the grocery store, on an even smaller level, right, there are self-checkout booths, so you don't even have to deal with the cashier. So what is that going to mean for the job market? I think that it could be problematic. Um, it already is problematic for some. Mm -hmm. They're losing their jobs as a result of robots taking over their jobs. Yeah. But what I also wanted to make a point about is how Google is always Always a step ahead of everything, right? They are just dominating in terms of search engines and online products and technology. But pretty soon, they will be paid contractors for war, and it'll feed into the military-industrial complex. Yeah. We'll have another company that makes a ton of money and and incentivizes going to war. So it, I see that as problematic as well. So I know we're focusing a little too much on the downsides. There could be positives because it would be cool to send a robot to to war as opposed to risking human lives. But at the same time, I mean, there are huge downsides. Right, and but you could also argue that if we were to send a robot into war, that that robot would have less remorse, let's say, than a regular soldier and could do far more dangerous well, like things. Like those drones, so, maybe? Like those drones yeah. that just blew up yeah. uh, the, the wedding in we'd say, uh, Pakistan. You know, we could send done. robots into war instead of human beings. We'd still be sending them to kill human sure. beings. Right. So it's still not a good idea on the whole. Look, 30 years ago, the, the whole issue was we need to create all these devices for the home for 40, 50 years ago now, uh, washing machines and uh, uh, vacuum cleaners that would reduce, and, and, and uh, assembly line machinery, that would reduce the, the need for human work so that we could all have more leisure time mm -hmm. and uh, take greater pleasure in life and support the arts and the pure sciences and all the things that could make life really worthwhile and joyous for humanity. Right. How'd that work um, out? Well, it might have worked out nicely if we didn't live in a capitalist system that demands that people constantly keep producing something new and consuming something new at the same time in order to maintain an ongoing steady stream of income based on the untenable idea that we have unlimited natural resources. I think if we can focus the idea of robotics and, and mechanized uh, labor s toward the betterment of mankind, that'd be great. But we're not. It's the replacement of mankind. It's the re well, that's what I'm saying. It's the it's replacement and it's the use for war that is, has been driving our economy since 1975. And I think it's time we really started to reevaluate what the purpose is 
of the development and the technological advances that we as, make. Really quick, yeah. as, as long as there's a profit motive and as long as we live in this capitalistic society, nothing is going to change. This, this robotic movement will continue. And the question is, what will we do as Americans to adapt to that new world? What will we do in our job market? Because people are going to lose their jobs. Right. People are being replaced. So how do we adapt to that? I mean, we have the trouble <laughs> of, of outsourcing, right? We're losing jobs in that way. Now we have robots taking over. Over. And you know you'll have people make the argument that hey you know what if robots can do this job we don't need people right well, like, isn't sorry that, isn't that the argument that people against raising the uh, minimum wage always say well if yes. you raise the minimum wage then we'll just make everything uh, mechanized and then everyone will be out of a job which uh, first of all let me say that is if if we're going to deal with the the sort of the fantasy scenario that robots would take over. If that's going to happen, it's going to be likely because we treated them as slave labor. <laughs> and when that you create a new yeah. form of slave labor, you're likely to eventually create resentments. I, I think that, that ultimately what we need to deal with is what is the purpose of our creation of technology. I have a theory. I believe that the, the planet is as a whole evolving. And we are part of that. We are an, essentially an organ. We move sugar from one place to another, and we, trans we turn it into energy, and we move oil from one place to another, and we turn it into energy, and we create the networks that are, are allowing the planet to begin to think. And right now, it is an adolescent. And all the planet is thinking about as a whole, it's not really all that conscious, it's not self-aware, it's yeah. just thinking about boobies and lower mortgage rates, and that's really <laughs> it right now. But Aren't those the things that really matter, though? <laughs> only, only to an adolescent. <laughs> Ultima ultimately, you don't like boobies? I, I'm not saying I don't like them, I'm saying that face. my brain does not constantly think about them and mention them to anybody who will listen. Uh -huh. um, I mentioned them to a third of the people who will listen. So um, my, I, I believe there is a Gaia principle at work. And ultimately, if robots replace us, that might be a natural evolutionary process. I, I buy that, that this is just, look, technology, we use technology. We have brains and we learn about science to just get to the next level of things and things aren't inherently bad. Uh, so last thought on this though, is there something possibly inherently bad about the fact that we now have basically two companies, Google and Apple, that are buying up everything else. So you used to have like a, you know, a scientist in his shop or something in his workshop building something and it was his life's work. But now anytime Google or Apple see anything interesting, they buy up because 100 million bucks or 300 million bucks or we've even seen a billion dollars for Instagram is nothing. And is there some risk in that that we just have these two giant companies competing to buy up everything else? It kind of reminds me of media conglomerates, except with media, you know, if you have a few major companies controlling the message, then you're not really going to get the full yeah. story. Um, but with, with Google and Apple buying everything, yeah, definitely, I do see that as problematic, especially when we lack a regulatory system in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this, this age of deregulation, and I worry what that will mean for the average worker and, you know, the average small business owner, right? How, how are you gonna compete with a huge company like Google and Apple? Right, it's one thing to compete with them when they have more money and everything else, but when they have robots too, and you still have to pay a human, <laughs> could be a problem. A risk in Bring monopolization and the consolidation of wealth? How could that be a problem? Yeah. Come on, we are slowly reverting. America is turning into Dickensian England, uh, and it's because capitalism grew out of feudalism. And when you keep pulling the, the constraints off of it, it just becomes feudalism again. Only now, it's not troubled by all that difficult noblesse oblige that required that the, the wealthy take care of the poor. Yeah.